On behalf of our father, George, my sister, Kay, and I want to thank the DeWitt family, the organizational committee, all the front office personnel, and all the great players, managers, and coaches with whom George worked, <coughs> excuse me, who appreciated his knowledge, dedication, and love for the game of baseball. I want to also thank all the St. Louis Cardinal fans, obviously the greatest baseball fans in the world. And also the, the sports media for their recognition of my father. Dad was a very humble man and he would have said his success and accomplishments were a gift from God and with the love and support of his wife, Ginny. By the way, my mother celebrated her 94th birthday yesterday. And I'm very sorry she couldn't make the trip here today. George grew up on a little farm in Evans Mills, New York, and went to Ithaca College. In 1940, there was a, ba a baseball, uh, Cardinal baseball tryout camp in Rochester, New York. Dad's father said that they could not go because it was haying season. <laughs> Fortunately for George and baseball, it rained in Evans Mills, so they went. <laughs> Mr. Branch Rickey signed George as a third baseman, and he asked Dad what expenses he and his father had incurred from their trip from Evans Mills. My dad told him, $19.80. Mr. Ricky gave him a $20 bill and told him to consider the 20 cents a signing bonus. <laughs> in 1946, after serving in the Navy during World War II as an underwater demolition expert, my dad returned to his baseball career. The Cards offered him an opportunity to try out for the third base position in the big leagues but told him that if he didn't get the job, he'd probably be released. So now with a, a wife and a new baby son, he accepted, accepted their second offer, uh, which was as player manager in the minor leagues. He did tell me in later life that he really wished he'd taken the opportunity to play in the big leagues. But after 28 years in the Cardinal farm system, Red Shandies brought dad to the big leagues as his third base coach. He also served as a bench coach for Tony uh, La Russa and Joe Torrey. He continued to work in the organization until his death in 2008. He lived by the motto, come early, work hard, stay late, and you'll stick around. George loved the, the minor leagues, especially uh, the double A class because the quotes kids there were enthusiastic and team-oriented and had good talent. He could teach them the finer points, hone their skills so they could advance, and he always tried to make the game fun along with teaching them to win. George's priorities in life were faith, family, and cardinal baseball. He was a devout Catholic and tried to go to Mass every morning. He knew the location of the closest Catholic church to every ballpark where the Cardinals uh, played. My sister Kay is convinced that his prayers enabled her to survive metastatic lung cancer, and she's a 15-year survivor to this very day. I also believe that his prayers helped to get me into medical school. And along with a recommendation from Mr. Stan Musial, who could turn down a request from Stan the man? <laughs> Family for dad not only included his beloved wife, kids, and grandkids, but also many, many players, coaches, and managers with whom he became close over his 66 years with the organization. Ginny was by his side his entire career. In 2008, when Ginny was sick in the hospital, Laura, my daughter, came to visit her, trying to cheer her up 
she told her, Grandma, I have good news. I'm pregnant. You're going to be a great grandmother. What are you hoping for, a boy or a girl? And Jenny quickly replied, Oh, definitely a girl. I've already been to enough baseball games. <laughs> when, when my kids were little, they called George Grandpa Baseball. <laughs> my dad spent his entire 66-year career with the Cardinals. He was very proud to be a Cardinal and wear the birds on the bat. And even his great friends, Sparky Anderson and Joe Torrey, could not entice him away from the Cardinals. In Cardinal baseball, George was an organization man and a great teacher, generous with his time. He taught his students respect, honesty, loyalty, and responsibility, and on the way they learned how to play baseball. He started keeping notes and stats in the 1940s. And he was very unusual in that he was never too old to learn a new or better way and, and used it as long as the statistics supported it. In his career, he worked with multiple GMs, staff, owners, and managers. He was particularly close to Red, Whitey, Joe, and Tony, and he had a special relationship with Jack Buck and Mike Shannon. He treated everyone he met with respect whether it was the ball boy or the owner. He had the ability to relate to everyone. And what would make my dad the most happy and proud today would be the fact that his students, like Chris Maloney, John Mayberry, Pop Warner, Willie McGee, Mike Schilt, Mark DeJohn, Galen Pitts, and Brian Everskirt, and many others, these men, his students are now the teachers who continue the great legacy of the Cardinals. In conclusion, I believe that if my father were here today, he would say that he was the luckiest man in the world. He did what he loved for almost 70 years, and throughout those years, he worked with the amazing people who have and still make up the Cardinal organization. On behalf of all of our family, thank you very much.